We praise God for being here today. Amen? Amen. God is good, and His mercy endures forever. So we just praise the Lord for all that He's saying and doing today. We praise God for the praise service. And we're going to go into our Word. We are Abundant Grace Church. We're located at 707 Wiley Street in Cedar Hill, Texas, 75104. And we can be reached at 972-723-2355. When you call, please leave a message. And uh, if you want to contact us by email, you can contact us at abundant.grace at att.net. Or you can listen to us on PirateRadio.com under Abundant Grace Church. Or you can watch us on Ustream.tv under Victory in Christ. Or on YouTube.com under my name, Bishop Ramon Di Maria. So we praise God for allowing us to reach the world through this media. Amen? We just, you know, we give glory to God, beloved, because God is doing great things in the church. Not only with the outreach, but with within us, too, as members of the church. God is, is, is giving us some very inspiring messages. So we just praise the Lord for that. And you know, it's like when God gives me a word, the word is for me first. Then is to, to be preached to others that have an ear to hear. Amen? Amen. So, my message title today is the try on mentality. We will be coming from Matthew chapter 24 and verse 24. Now the writer uh, this gospel is Matthew the Apostle. His surname was Levi, and he was a tax collector. It was written approximately A.D. 58 from Palestine. The theme of this gospel is Christ is the King of the Kingdom of God. And our golden text, which I will read, is from Matthew 24 and 38 which says, For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Which means when Christ comes back, we won't know the day and the hour. But if we watch the signs, we listen to the word of God that's being preached, because Noah preached, but nobody was listening. They didn't want to hear because they had never had rain before. But Jesus never returned before either. So we have to understand that it's a warning. The signs that we are seeing are a warning that Jesus is coming back. Now we have to understand that God has a plan for the ages. And that plan is to take his creation to heaven. But how many know that all people that say, Lord, Lord, will not enter in the kingdom of God? A few points that I want to make is that the large number of Old Testament quotations used in a book seem to indicate that Matthew directed his primary writing toward a Jewish audience. He lays great stress on Old Testament passages which show that Jesus is the Messiah or the Christ, the anointing one, the long-awaited King of Israel. Of the 15 parables and the 20 miracles recorded in the book of Matthew, 10 of the parables and 3 of the miracles are not mentioned in other Gospels. Only in the Gospel of Matthew. So we have to understand that. In addition, the account of the saints who came back to life at Christ's resurrection of Matthew 27 and 51 to 52, the sealing 
of Jesus' tomb and the posting of the Roman guard outside of it, Matthew 27, 62 to 66, are exclusively reported in the Gospel of Matthew. That's all. So Matthew gives a little more detail as to what happened. So let us continue with our main text, which is verse 24 of Matthew chapter 24. And it reads as follows. So please pay attention to the message today. For there shall arise false Christ and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Remember, if it were possible. So what, what that means, what says if, that means it's not possible. Amen? So, the disciples of Jesus had asked concerning the times. They asked about in verse 3. Now, in verse 3, they asked about, uh, let me read it, about the coming woes. And it said, and he sat upon the Mount of Olives. The disciples came unto him privately saying, Tell us, what shall these signs be? And what shall be the sign of the coming and of the end of the world? So Jesus is asking, I mean, Jesus is answering what they were asking of him. So, Christ gave them no answer to that question. So they asked, what shall be the sign? He didn't say when he was coming, but he told them what to watch out for. Because Jesus comes as a thief in the night. So nobody knows when he is coming, the time, but to watch the signs of his coming. So the question, this question Jesus asked fully. So I will I'll break down verse 24. And it's very important. Keep in mind the title of the message. The try on mentality. Some people try anything. And it's usually the path of least resistance. They want to make heaven an easy task to get to. They want to take the easy way. They don't want to pray. They don't want to fast. They don't want to face adversity. They just want to have a life of ease and not have to answer to anybody, especially answer to God. So when, as we look at verse 24, we open up with the word for, F-O-R. For is a primary article assigning a reason, explanation, or intensification. Example, because, but, for indeed, no doubt, seeing then, therefore, or verily. So Jesus is saying to his disciples, verily, or therefore. Therefore. So when he's answering the question, so let's back up to 23 real quick, then you'll understand. That if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe him not, because, okay, there's a word, for therefore there shall rise false Christ. Therefore, he tries to intensify and have you know that, hey, something is going to happen. And you need to be aware of what's going to happen. A lot of times, as we say in our culture, we take things for granted. Oh, well, this has always been this way. We've always had bad times. We've always had wars. But it's going to be a war to end all wars. See, when the king of kings comes back, it's all over. Okay? When Christ comes back, it's all over. He shall establish his kingdom on the earth. So if you don't believe in Jesus Christ, guess what? You have a problem. Yeah. 
So, as we see, it says, because or but, for indeed, what? For indeed, there shall arise false Christ. He says, surely this is going to happen. Surely there's going to be an imposter. Surely there's going to be a false prophet. Surely there's going to be an antichrist. And it's going to come. And you can see it in the book of Revelation because John wrote about it in the book of Revelation. And he wrote about the antichrist, the antichrist. And he wrote about the false prophet. He wrote about it. Guess what? They're coming. But they will not deceive God's elect. It says, and if it was possible, even if it was possible, what? You can't deceive the elect. The ones that would be deceived, what? You know be who? You know who they will be? And listen to this, those that are watching this video. Those of you that are sitting in a church. Those of you that you just do your duty going to church. Your Christmas duty, your Easter duty. You just show up. It's a social club. Guess what? You're going to be fooled. You're going to be fooled by these imposters, by these false prophets. But when you are in Christ, you will not be fooled. Because you said, if it, even if it were possible, which means it is not possible, we won't be deceived. And the word of God is preached in truth and directly and simply from this pulpit. And I'm, and I'm saying that all those preachers out there that are preaching a happy old, happy-go-lucky message without conviction, turn around and preach the Word of God directly. Yes. Preach it in truth. Because you are answered to God on a day of judgment for everyone that you cause to go to hell because you preach the wrong thing. You need to preach the truth, get people saved, preach with conviction, preach with, with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And if you don't, you will answer on that dreadful day what the Word of God says. That's a warning. I, I will not retract that warning. Because I believe I'm preaching on the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Then it says, we're talking about arise, okay? We're talking about the word arise. There shall arise. The word arise means to awaken or rouse, to rear up, to stand up. Out of the woodwork, the false prophets are going to come. If you think that we've had them in the past, wait until the last days. And you can see them now coming up out of the woodworks. Lying, cheating, stealing, leading people astray. If you thought Jim Jones and Koresh and all of them were bad, you haven't seen anything yet. It's going to, the intensity is going to be multiplied because the word says that Satan knows he only has but a little bit of time. So he's going to go out as a roaring lion devouring whoever lets him. If you're out there watching this video and you're falling away, you're letting the, the, the problems of this world rule over you, you're being led astray, you're going down the wrong road. You need to turn around and repent and get back with Christ Amen. before you fall. And when you fall, there's no getting up. You need to turn. But says false Christ, these are persons claiming to be the Messiah. We saw that before. People saying, I am Christ. I am the Messiah. Jesus says, don't follow them. Don't go there. There's only one Messiah. And he ascended into heaven and is sitting at the right hand of God. And he is going to come back. The day, the hour, we don't know. But look at the times. You can see. He's coming. When the Father says to Jesus, go, he's coming. As a thief in the night, you will not know when he's coming. Unless you are saint of God, and you're saved, you're sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, then, then you will know. So a couple examples I said before, like David Koresh, Jim Jones, I led people astray. They saw, uh, even in May, uh, with that false teacher, that Jesus coming back on this day. People saw what they had, they got rid of it, and they went, and guess what? Jesus didn't come that afternoon. What foolishness to believe. They, they could not be the elect of God. How could they? The word says, even if it was possible, these people were deceived. 